All right, we're back. It's time to get down to business again. I'm Rob Campbell at Transworld Headquarters. Today we have Andy Tompkins of ASR. I see you, Rob. Nice to see you too. Good to have you around. Well, I didn't realize when we were first setting this interview up, I'd be sitting down with a vice president. <laughs> I should have been much more intimidated when we got to the film, but I understand yeah, you are recently <laughs> uh, have a new title promoted to- Yes, what, I was. Thank you. The yes. title is vice president of sports. So Thank you. There's so much to talk about when you come around with ASR. The show's coming up uh, September Definitely. 10th and 12th. Yeah, we're we'll in the final you. countdown here, a couple nice. weeks away. Uh, particular, uh, in the last, not too long ago, uh, announcement got made that you'd worked with SEMA to make some changes to the show, do yes. some new things, incorporate mm -hmm. some stuff. Uh, one of the things that was talked about was you made a kind of a target list and mm -hmm. had ways to reach out to get like the top 200 retailers at the show to make yes. sure they're there. Um, What's, what are kind of the details that, I mean, are, are you and Doug going to get in a van and drive around and pick them all up, or are you guys doing something more? Doug very well may pick up some key retailers, mm -hmm. actually. He has that capability. But uh, I think, you know, really just to start from ASR's perspective, we market mm -hmm. to a, a database of over 5,000 retailers. So we really try to track across the, the mm -hmm. gamut of retail types, you know, from specialty to sporting goods, who's really uh, selling product out there and who's important to our exhibitors. What SEMA allows us to do, the partnership with SEMA that is, is really have a feedback loop, you know, what's most important to the exhibitor base and the membership of SEMA. And what Doug and I worked on together was really targeting a group of 200, you know, really key retailers from across regions and categories that really make uh, ASR run and make the industry run. You know, it's kind of the 80-20 rule. Nice. I know that's one of the other things you have going on with uh, SEMA is you announced there's going to be a press conference. Yeah, we're going to kick show. off this, uh, the first day of the show with a press conference. Mm -hmm. and. Really, this is a great opportunity for both media and the industry to have a dialogue about what's happening in the marketplace. So mm -hmm. the cool thing from SEMA's perspective is that they have the top leaders in the industry as part of their board or certainly relationships. You know, this is people like Paul Nadi, this is people like Bob McKnight, um, you know, just to name a few, Doug Palladini, um, uh, you know, cer certainly some, some really key names out there. And, and uh, so much of the non-endemic media, you know, the mainstream media is looking for you know, maybe the difficult story, this is a way for us to really say, okay, here the, here's what's happening right. right from, you know, leadership point of view sure. and uh, really make sure they hear the specifics that uh, are key to, to get out there. I'm imagining the classic old press conference with the president, there's people yelling and screaming and flashbulbs <laughs> popping. Definitely. I, I think it's going to be a bit of a media out. frenzy and we're talking uh -huh. about doing it in a very public place. So not mm -hmm. only, you know, key VIP media can be right there to ask questions, but the show itself can gather mm -hmm. around and watch. What is the key advantage of like, you know, you spend the time and energy to do it? I mean, what, what do you really think helps the show in particular when there's some positive media coverage and the non-endemic media specific? Well, I'd say on, you know, on average, uh, what companies are looking for from ASR is, is certainly connection with their best customers. And we have a, a, you know, a very strong international audience when you really look at our, our uh, retail base. 20% you know, of those retailers are from outside the country. So it's very difficult to reach those people otherwise. Uh, so that's kind of the base level of what you're doing at ASR, really reaching you know, directly to the mm -hmm. customers that are selling your product. Uh, right, so one of the other things on the list was a new and improved lounge. And I was wondering about that is, you know, can something like a cool lounge really make a big difference when you're sitting there going, oh, our shop's in trouble, you know, we had to cut some staff, I don't know if we can pull off the show. Oh wait, there's a DJ in the lounge, <laughs> you know, we got to get there. I mean, is that... How much of a difference maker is that and how important is it in the, in the big scheme? Well, I'd say it's, uh, it's part of the experience is the way I uh -huh. describe it. So I'm not sure if people will get on a, a flight just to come see the lounge, but what we feel is that a great trade show has product. You know, that's, that's the key. You know, the product, buyers are saying to see the product, the brands are showing that. Uh, that's what the media primarily comes to see. And then, you know, which, when you look at above and beyond that, though, it's the personalities that are managing these, these operations mm -hmm. and uh, also the community of the industry and uh, educational aspects. So when you look at the community and the educational aspect of a show, that's where the lounge comes into play because it's a very central location, it's very easy for people to find each other, it's a great place to network. You don't have to leave the show floor to have a cup of coffee or get some food or check the internet. And uh, it's really a networking opportunity so you really can engage from a retail point of view, you know, sit down with your brand executives. They're visited mm -hmm. by reps from time to time, but most buyers really want to hear from that decision maker, where's the brand headed? You know, what, what can we do together? What can I expect in the future? And again, the lounge is a place to facilitate that. So uh, you know, I, I would describe it as a show feature, but a key one, because it's a, it really facilitates uh, you know, two really important aspects of a trade show, community education. And then one of the, the fourth thing of the four major points was that uh, there's going to be uh, a URL, a mm -hmm. specific website with uh, regular updates from those? Yeah, basically what, what we're doing is, uh, you know, we're, and we're hoping to work with you on this as well, but uh, basically we're capturing vignettes from the show floor, uh, mm -hmm. talking to SEMA member brands, talking to other exhibitors, 
know, what are you up to? What's your story? What can your customers and uh, retailers expect to see in the future? And then putting this footage online through this URL. And the idea is to extend the boundaries of the show beyond the three days. So cool. again, and just trying to really um, you know, spread those brand stories and you know, what the industry is up to. Nice. Awesome. Well, the ASR channel is on the Biz Network. So the show, next show coming up September 10th through the 12th. September right? 10th through the 12th. Center. You know, we're really uh, we're excited to put on another. In the another meantime, event. information asrbiz.com. Asrbiz.com is the easiest way to find us. All right, excellent. Well, thanks for coming. Awesome, Rob. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. the opportunity. Right, so you've put on a lot of shows, been to a lot of shows, definitely run a lot of shows. Do you have anything that stands out? Is there one just like craziest situation you ever had to deal with? This, the situation that really stands out in my mind was in 1999 when I was working on the outdoor retailer show. Uh, Salt Lake is not known for tornadoes, but they had one that day. Right, the tornado. And it ripped right through one of these pavilions and literally destroyed it. You know, this was a steel supported structure just gone in a matter of 30 